Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Uh, today I am looking at a new ink uh, from Robert Oster, uh, fresh out this year. Uh, that ink uh, comes of course in the standard bottle which you'll see up close in the video. Uh, but the colour today is Chartreuse, I don't know if that's how you say it. Um, Apologise for my pronunciation. Uh, this is a really interesting ink. I hear it is on some uh, simple card stock. Uh, so you can get a bit of an idea of what the ink actually looks like. It's a really interesting sort of uh, yellowy green sort of colour. If you're familiar with the um, the liquor, that would be what you would expect from this ink. So I'm going to run it through these, the standard tests. I've got it here inked in my Twisby Eco with the Broadney, which is uh, what I use for most of my reviews as sort of the standard pen. Um, We'll run through a couple of the properties, the performance, all that sort of stuff, uh, show it on a few different papers, and then uh, I'll do a quick wrap up and a bit of a scoring. Uh, so thanks for watching, and I hope you found this video useful, and uh, let's get started. Well, here we are with a Robert Oster, a Robert Oster uh, Chartreuse, Chartreuse, however you want to say, uh, here in the standard 50 mil bottle. They're sort of a environmentally friendly uh, environmentally sourced and manufactured uh, plastic bottle, um, which is really great to know. The Robert Oster uh, lineup, it just it has a very quick um, overview, uh, prides itself on being uh, environmentally friendly and uh, non toxic and also socially aware and socially conscious. You see them doing a lot of great work for charity. Uh, Robert over there is uh, one of the truly great guys of the pen and ink industry. Um, so the, the he has a range of inks that come in uh, different size bottles. This is the standard 50 mil bottle of the signature uh, line, which um, is the standard inks, and uh, they're nicely labelled there on the um, on the top, as you can see, with the n name and number and a little sort of swatch of the ink. Um, and here it is, of course, on my sort of little card stock uh, that I showed you earlier. So it's an interesting ink this particular one um, I've tried I've done some basic tests I've been writing with this for a few days and on different papers and things and I've got some thoughts and uh, but let's see it here on Rodeo so here is my little test page so I've just done a little swab of it there which you can see and then some writing and uh, we've got some criteria there which we'll uh, finish up in a second um, and as I said, this is all done with a Twisby Eco with a broad nib, which if you watch uh, any of my other ink reviews, particularly the recent ones, you'll see I've sort of standardised uh, this pen. Um, so, some basic thoughts. I think this is an interesting ink. Um, it's a really high shading ink. Like, let's just, if you just check out that there, like, there's a lot of shading, and that's not going to be to everyone's taste. And let's face it, nor is this colour. This is a unique uh, colour. It's not a sort of a standard... Uh, you know, yellow or green or anything like that. This is sort of sits in a in a grey area, if you will, uh, and it cha it looks different, slightly different on different sorts of paper as well. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's it's an interesting. I think on on more absorbent paper, you get sort of more of the green coming through. On lighter paper, it looks more yellow, uh, depending. Yeah, of course, and it will also depend on the nib you write with. Um, in a finer nib, uh, you wouldn't quite get some of the depth of colour that you get from this uh, nice sort of broad. There is some interesting properties uh, to this ink, including the different shades of yellow and green. So if light uh, coloured shading inks are your thing, then this is definitely uh, the ink for you. So there's a couple of little things I want to do firstly. Let's just look at the chromatography here. Um, you can see what makes up this colour and where you get these shades from. There's a lot of vibrant yellow right there at the top. Uh, and then you get some hints of blue towards the bottom, of course, and greys. But there's a little line of pink in there, which just gives an interesting sort of depth of colour, uh, I think, to this ink. Let's now do some uh, comparisons of, of a few other inks here. So this is a, another little swab on some cardstock. And uh, next to this, I will place a couple of other inks that I think are similar. Well, not similar, but uh, sort of to give you an idea of where this sits. First are a couple of other Robert Oster inks. The first is Sublime, which you can see is much more green, uh, but in some of the greener shades of this ink, you see hints of this uh, color coming through. Then we get uh, Robert Oster Green Olive. Now, this is obviously more yellow, uh, but between Sublime and green, ol green Olive, you get this interesting place where this particular ink sits. Now let's look at two inks from other 
um, other brands. We've got uh, an ink from Krishna here, which is Yellow Valley, which I think is probably the closest in my collection uh, to the ink uh, and shows off some of those sort of nice sort of uh, more mustardy yellow tones that uh, this ink uh, seems to have going through it. And then the last one is Jacobin's Vert Olive, uh, which I think is a, a really interesting match to the green. Not dissimilar to Sublime in a lot of ways, uh, but has some of these nice sort of um, darker tones in it as well. So uh, I'm going to do a very quick writing sample with it here just so you can see it in action. And uh, um, I'll zoom in nicely on that to show you sort of how the color changes as it dries and all of those. We'll do a quick water test, we'll talk through some scoring and then see sort of how this ink goes on some other paper as well. So let's start with the writing sample here. So there you can see, as I said, interesting colour, uh, lots of nice shading, uh, but probably not a colour for professional use. But tons and tons of shading uh, we get from the yellow to the green, which is nice, if that is your thing. I quite like shading, so for me that's one of the things about this ink that I really quite enjoy. Let's look at it on some other paper. So I've done writing samples on... Um, Four other types of paper, um, and we'll start here with, this is a Hobonichi Weeks um, from 2018, so, uh, just using up the spare pages, so it's, this is this is a Tomo River paper. You can see there's a nice sort of hint of the green really coming through sort of on this paper, um, and you know, it performs really well. There's sort of no bleed coming through, as you would expect. Um, yeah, it looks good. Let's now look at it on, um, I have it here on some Kunisawa paper, which I like to test inks on because this is uh, not necessarily the most friendly paper, uh, but this performed nicely. There's no feathering um, and no bleed, which is brilliant to see because some inks really do feather and bleed uh, on this paper, but this looks to be performing really well. Next we have it on um, basic sort of copy paper from Reflex here. Um, and you can see also here there's virtually no bleeding, or no, or no feathering, sorry. Um, and this is just 80 gram paper. And on the reverse there, there's no bleed coming through, which, um, you know, even with some paper friendly inks, you still get um, a little bit of, of bleed coming through. Now we try it on a student notepad. Now this is uh, Spirex, so this is really basic, lightweight paper. And you can see there's also pretty good performance. There's virtually no feathering. You might be able to see sort of a tiny bit sort of around the S there. Um, but really, like, it's, it's, you've got to say that's pretty good on this sort of quality paper. Uh, and then if you look at the reverse, this is the only place we see any... Uh, bleeding and it's only really dots and you know this Twisby Eco does put down a decent amount of ink so um, it is expected on this paper to get some bleed uh, but that performs better than most inks do on this paper I have to say and if we just look at the bait at the Rhodia uh, the reverse of this like you can see there there's no uh, bleeding where I've done the writing either it, it performs really really nicely some lighter inks do bleed less or the bleeding is less noticeable, but this is actually performing really, really well. So now let's quickly do this water test. So what I'm going to do is uh, two parts of this test are to drop uh, some water onto the top part of this. And then the second part of the test uh, is to take a wet uh, cotton bud here and just run it over the writing and see if we can get any of that 
uh, removed. So while that's drying, uh, I'm just going to quickly um, go through a couple of these. So shading, it, uh, these are out of five. So shading, I give it a five. This is one of the highest sh shading inks I've seen. There is no sheen and there is no shimmer. These are things that you are personal tasting, so it'll be dependent on your taste whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just giving a score as to how much there is of it. Dry time, I've given a three. On this rodeo paper, it was 25 to 20, 20 to 25 seconds. Just very quickly on the sh uh, sheen and shimmer, this is a, quite a dump of it on some Tomo River, and uh, you can see there's no sheen there whatsoever, um, just out of interest sake. Uh, Wetness and flow, I've given a three. Sometimes this ink uh, in, a, in a dry pen, I had it in one other pen, uh, which wasn't as wet as this Twisby Eco. Um, sometimes it does feel a little bit dry, uh, but it's pretty good in general. Um, cleaning, I've given it a four. Uh, bleed and feather, I've given four. And personal, which is my personal uh, feelings about the ink, I've given it a three. It's not really my color, but I can see how well this ink uh, performs. Uh, so let's now just dry this up. Um, always interesting to look at the paper towel after drying up the water test. You can see just how much uh, of the ink is, is brought up. Uh, and you can see there that very little is left. There's a little bit of sort of, actually it's interesting, you can see a, like a, a line of grey, uh, that grey blue sort of colour coming through there. Uh, but most of the detail is absolutely gone, and particularly where we move the ink with the cotton swab. Uh, it's basically disappeared, but it does leave some nice interesting sort of yellow highlight um, So interesting ink might be good for sort of art use in that respect everyday writing This is not maybe going to be an ink uh, that most people will find uh, That useful um, So for water resistance, I'm going to give it um, I'm going to give it a zero. I'll give it a one because there is some sort of detail just left in that sort of dark green blue sort of color so if you were desperate to find, get your writing back, you might find something left there. And that is also, as we said, sort of apparent in the chromatography as well. So performance overall, now this is not an average. I'm not doing an average of the, um, of the criteria marks here, uh, because some of these like shading and sheen and shimmer and those sorts of things, they're all going to be uh, personal taste, uh, as is my personal taste here. So this is performance, so this is bleeding, feathering, water resistance, dry time, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, and based on uh, these sort of criteria set out here, um, I'm going to have to give this roughly um, about a 3 point We'll say 3.8. It's probably 3.5 to 3.8. Um, so water resistance lets this down a lot. Um, if that's a quality that you're after, this is not a permanent ink. But feathering and bleed are brilliant. Cleaning is great. Wetness is pretty good. Um, and dry time is fair. So really, it's pretty, you know, it's a pretty decent ink. Uh, and an interesting colour. And Robert has been doing interesting things recently. Think of things like smokescreen. Uh, and he came out with a couple of ranges of 1970s inks, which were uh, 80s and that which were sort of more pastel sort of colours. And then his uh, Get Set Go series was these bright, vibrant, high sheening inks. And then he's doing things like this, which are nice sort of interesting sort of um, colours that aren't necessarily that widely found in the fountain pen uh, uh, in community. So that was Robert Oster, Robert Oster uh, Chartreuse, an interesting ink. Hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at, at the underscore offstage underscore me. Uh, and you can uh, get in touch with me and see what I'm up to over there and show me what you're up to. If you've got products you think I should be looking at, get in touch. Or if there's a way you'd like to support this channel, please feel free to drop me a message and let's see what we can do. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, your ink, and your writing. And... I'll talk to you later.